Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special Final Fantasy retrospective SDGC episode. Uh, if you don't know who I am, that makes sense. My name is Anthony John. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not Mr. Negative. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. It's so weird. John's not talking, but there's a voice coming out. If you want a different bearded guy talking to you about <laughs> why Final Fantasy was best in the 90s. We've got four options for you <laughs> right now. <laughs> You're here we for are bearded white guys talking about video games. And we have a show for you. We're in the right damn place. Dunzo, we are all your huckleberries. Uh, <laughs> That's just <laughs> insane. Today we're uh, going to be talking about Final Fantasy III, uh, originally released on the Famicom back in 1990. Not, not the good one, but not the, the good actual one. Three. Yeah, actual actual Final Fantasy III. Uh, the last of the Famicom Final Fantasies that also is the progenitor of the job system as it appeared yep. later in Final Fantasy V and Final Fantasy Tactics. The uh, idea of having like a blank slate Final Fantasy character who you just build up into a bunch of different classes started with this game, but it remained Japan exclusive for a decade and a half and eventually was remade in full 3D for the Nintendo DS in, <clears throat> in 2006. Was Edit that, because I can't... Yeah, I can't. 2006 or seven. It's one of those two. We're, we're gonna. We're gonna. All right. It was 2006. Yes. Oh, yes. Good call. Right off the top 2006. of your head. Done. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Directed. Directed by the Gooch himself. The yes. Nobu Sakaguchi. The legend. Uh, and a fascinating game. It is very very accessible these days. The 3D remake started on DS, but was ported over. To the PSP, it appeared on the PlayStation 3, on Steam. There's an Ouya version of Final Fantasy. No, III. fuck it. I did not know that. Yeah, because there's an Android oh, and iOS wow. version of the DS port of Final Fantasy 3. <laughs> so you can so yeah, of course if it's on Android, then you know, of course you could play it on on if you hated yourself enough but to play was anything it on, on Ouya. But 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 was it on the Gizmondo? Was it on the Gizmondo? Was there the Gizmondo or Wonder Swan port? I, I actually, there was. It, yeah, it's very Nobody funny. Nobody will ever know. <laughs> it's funny you should say that, John. The first time they actually considered remaking Final Fantasy III was for the Wonder Swan. That's fantastic. Nice. There were actually plans for a Final Fantasy III remake because they did one and two for the Wonder Swan. The Final Fantasy III is a fascinating game. Let's talk a little bit about the original Famicom version before talking about the 3D one that most people are going to know. Yeah. It was... For 1990, an incredibly stripped-down RPG. Yeah. I, I was going to say, Anthony, um, Final Fantasy III on the Famicom actually had a lot more in common with the original Final Fantasy than it did with II, because story-wise, granted, we're not saying that Final Fantasy II was a, a, a benchmark in RPG storytelling. However, I do feel that Final Fantasy III took a step back and mm -hmm. really went back to that bare-bones story approach that final mm -hmm. fantasy one took so in a lot of ways i feel like even though final fantasy 2 gets a lot of hate deservedly so simply because it's just not a very good game final fantasy 3 objectively had a poorer story than two yeah, yeah. And, and that was at least at the time by design the the gooch had this idea the gooch I, I'm just going to keep calling him. He is please, please do it. That's, all, his, I'm, that's yeah. all I'm going to ever know him now. It's his own but, preferred yeah, nickname. So, please. <laughs> so the, the Gooch has this history of whenever he's about to start on the next big idea, he always wants to strip things back to basics. And you see that with like Final Fantasy IX. Oh, before we get to the big epic cinematic storytelling of ten, we're gonna bring it back to fantasy. With you nine. see with five even too. I mean, that's coming right up soon. So very much so. And this was he, there. The plans for Final Fantasy IV were already in place. They were already working on it. And the idea of Final Fantasy IV being this shift to a very sort of grand, structured, linear narrative was there. And he wanted to make something that was sort of this perfect encapsulation of the all-gameplay RPG as it had started with, you know, Dragon Quest and, uh, you know, Wizardry and all of those mid-'80s RPGs that were really popular in Japan. As a result, there is 
al almost no story. You are just four yeah. nameless children at the beginning of this game. You're all onion knights. Onion, no, uh, the which, classic onion I'll, knight. I want to bring that up after you're done. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. want to get back to onion <laughs> knights? Yes, I do. Uh, to somebody who doesn't know anything about Final Fantasy who might be listening to this, which is nobody, but uh, yeah, just the term Onion Knight makes you go, hold up. Wait. They were Onion Knights, which was the style at the time. There's an <laughs> Onion Knight inside of all of it. It's kind of it's like wearing, uh, uh, what is this, uh, Nike pumps in the 90s? <laughs> like, 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 back in the day, it was cool to be an Onion Knight, but now if you bust out your Onion Knight armor, all the, all the Final Fantasy guys are just going to laugh at you. Yeah, they're just going to be like, you scrub. Uh... <laughs> The other thing that sort of was exceptional about this game, in addition to the fact that it was you had your bank, blank slate characters and then you trained them up in different jobs, black mage, white mage, all of those different things that sort of populated throughout the series. But then a lot of the ones that you see show up later in five and tactics like Berserker and Beastmaster, those those originated here. This game was also punishingly difficult, just yeah. mm -hmm. uh, miserable to play uh, on the Famicom. Random battles were so frequent that, you know, people go, who go back to uh, the United States Final Fantasy III, uh, Final Fantasy VI, John's uh, religion. <laughs> it's not, yeah. It's, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I hey, pray to the altar of Kefka. And play, pray to the altar I, of Gogo -Go and his weird earthworm. Uh, that game, you know, you walk a few steps and then you get in a fight. You walk a few steps and you get in a, into a fight. And the the modern sensibility is like, oh my god, what's with all these fights? If you, the very first thing you do in Final Fantasy three is you start in a dungeon. It just you press start. Yeah. You're in a dungeon, and it's every almost every tile you're getting into a fight, and it never really lets up. You you it is just a punishing punishing all mechanics RPG. The DS remake, uh did go in the direction of adding a lot more story instead of sort of four faceless characters there are four you know they actually have names who are the, and unique well, who appearances are the, anthony who i remember rafia um yeah, there's, but that's rafia, there's rafia um, Luneth was the, was the Luneth main was the main person right luna yeah. yeah Luneth. yeah Luneth, rafia and i don't remember the last well, there was a name that started with x i don't i don't want to say xavier well, there was Zand, no, Zand who is the Zand Zand is main antagonist until the giant space flew it's, from nowhere. It's Zand. Zand. Yes, not yeah. Xander. Just Zand. Yeah. Just Can Zand. I, I'm just going to call him Xander from now on and yeah. think, think of Zand Vin Cage. character from. Yeah. From, yeah. That's so, one so, thing I've got to say about Final Fantasy III is, is, you know, you talk about Zand as the like antagonist who is absent for most of the story, even in the stuff that they add in. But like. In one of many ways that Final Fantasy 3 is almost the true beginning of the franchise to me, Final Fantasy 3 really adds in the whole, by the way, here's the second real villain completely here's out of nowhere. Here's the actual final sure. boss, the Cloud yeah, of Darkness. You've been ready for Xand this whole time, and then suddenly here's Cloud of Darkness right at the very end of the game, completely out of nowhere, never mentioned before. Um, and I actually have a fondness for the Cloud of Darkness as a villain, like, in retrospect, once again, because there's been a lot of kind of flavor added over the years through things like Dissidia, but she's just a random giant monster boss from nowhere that takes over the game's story and turns it into a completely different story. I mean, she's yeah. no ex-death, but... That's true, but, but no she is be. basically just rough draft Zeromas. Like, yeah. he's, he's, what, what I would actually call, I would actually go, I would take it a step further and I would call the Cloud of Darkness like budget Necron. Like, that's that's <laughs> that's what I would call it. Is, I think she's the best example of Necron before Necron just because she's so out of note. Now, nobody's as out of place as Necron because yeah. at least Cloud of Darkness shows up before the very final boss fight. But wasn't that also Zeromus at that point? Like, those earlier games, well, sure, but Zemus yeah, had but, but been Zeromus was just Zemus, but technically, technically dosing, like not to get too deep into four, but technically, Zemus was controlling Golbez the whole time, so yeah, right, that was actually, right. Zemus you were dealing with, you didn't know but, but you know what? I feel like Zand, Zand is an interesting, he's an interesting villain because he actually got a raw deal. Um, you know, when you talk about characters like uh, Doga and Une. Um, they were given immortality, and Zand was given the gift of mortality, which honestly, if my brother and sister were given more immortality, and they were like, I got the best gift of all for you, you're gonna die one day, I'd be like, yo, <laughs> fuck that, like, that is, that is a shit gift, that sucks. That's, that's the, that's the god equivalent of getting socks for Christmas when your parent, your brother and sister got video game systems. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, also, so, I don't have feet. Anthony, <laughs> I, Anthony, I've only played. I've only played the DS version once. I played through it once yeah. because I felt obligated to. I would, I, you know, I would describe Final Fantasy three on the DS as fine. It's just fine. I don't remember too much. Like the story was still pretty basic, if I remember correctly. Like it, it they gave the characters names and motivations, but aside yeah. from that, it was your typical, very typical JRPG fair. I mean, honestly, it had, I would say, as much story as you see in the Final Fantasy 1 remakes that popped yeah. up on Wonderswan, PlayStation 1, and Game Boy Advance. Like, they, there is color there. Like, the characters have names, but, like, that's it. Like, yeah, they don't they, they really don't, get arcs. They don't, They don't you have know. arcs. There are no personalities beyond, like, boy, girl, other boy, yeah. other girl. That's That's kind of it. Uh, and I will say that the 3DS, uh, the 3DS, I keep saying that, 3DS, it, it, there's a space in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 3DS has, it, it is by modern standards, a very punishingly difficult game. I suppose, it, oh man, that, that oh, there was boss a fight. lot Garuda of uh, was involved in that game. So and much. And boss grinding. encounters are also incredibly like, like, unlike a lot of other games that end up using the job system later, 3 really punishes you not for having a very specific job set up for everybody for bosses we got to jobs yeah Yeah. that the game did not reward experimentation it wasn't like final fantasy tactics final fantasy 5 or you could put together like a composition that you think worked you know and mostly make it work yeah three was very much like Oh, you didn't bring along two red mages and a black mage to yeah, this boss was, fight? Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't have, and 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 that, and that I think was the big drawback of three's job system in that it was incredibly situational and a very wholly dependent yes. upon, yeah, what you had, what you brought to the table in certain situations. Whereas, uh, you know, like it was just mentioned in Final Fantasy V, you were rewarded for experimenting, um, saying, okay, well, or in Final Final Fantasy Tactics is another fantastic example, yeah. but in three it was more of a learning process saying, okay, well, I'm coming up to this certain boss here. I better have two red mages, a fighter, and a black mage. Yeah. yeah. Um, the boss it, was a puzzle that you had to have the right party layout in order to even have a chance at beating. And the, um, the, the so there's a lot of that, failing and starting over. There, there's problem that with that too, where you're supposed to get to the boss, die once, and then immediately just stay in the dungeon where the boss is to just grind, 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 grind until yeah. you have the skills that you need to kill them. That was uh, what I was going to say was that it, exp- it it shined a really bright light on the biggest glaring flaw of the game, which was the amount of grinding necessary because not yeah. only did you need to grind your levels and you needed to grind your jobs, but if you didn't have the right jobs, you basically had to start from scratch and do a whole new round of grinding to get mm-hmm. the job you needed that could very well be useless by the time you finally finished that fight. The arc just, yeah. of Final Fantasy 2, 3, and 4 is fascinating because it's three very different approaches to trying to say, we want you to have a very specific experience with this. And the solution in 2, 3, and 4 is to make things incredibly rigid. And 2 says, all right, you're going to have to grind, but it's all about drilling down into the personalities of this character. Like, get into battle, 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 battle until the, uh, God, I can't remember all of their names in two, but you're the archer. Make sure that she has really high defense because you keep wailing on her. Three says, go in here, grind repeatedly, and we're going to keep you in the track of experiencing all of these mechanics. And four says, we're going to keep grinding you into the path of this story rather than just setting you out into the world. And eventually you see with five and six and really seven, the idea that, oh, trying to be super restrictive was not benefiting the world in these games. Mm-hmm. It wasn't inviting the player into really inhabiting this place. And five, six, and seven are all games that are so easy to break. You can mm-hmm. manipulate them into doing whatever you want, but they're the ones that people love because they're broken. Yeah. Yeah. Like, th- there's a reason that those are the games that get speed run. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, you know, I, I, it's and it's one reason why it like I, I so if for anybody listening, if you've never played Final Fantasy three and you want to have an appreciation for how far the series has come, I absolutely recommend you go play three. Like like as long like, as it's the DS version. Yeah, long, the DS version is worth experiencing. Because because it is it is interesting to see how games like uh five or four or five and especially five and six, some of the later iterations uh on the Super Nintendo, 
allowed you to heavily customize your party and figure out what what party configurations work best for you those two games are great at telling you yes yes you can yes you can final fantasy 3 just constantly tells you no yeah, every yeah. it gives you it's, options but most of them are wrong in any it's given a situation. very rigid however i will say i think it's a very important to point out the series owes quite a bit to Final Fantasy III. I mean, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but Final Fantasy III was the first appearance of the summon monsters yep. that have become a yep. staple. There's a the ton in Final Fantasy III that is like, like I said, to me, it's the origins of the franchise for real because um, most of the like magic conventions come from three. Most of the classes that we've come to know and love, aside from like your staple white and black mage mm-hmm. that were, you know, real final that started in one, um, come from three. Uh, the whole convention of the secondary villain that's bigger and weirder coming out of nowhere right in the end of the third act. Um, there's tons of creatures and monsters that are a mainstay for this friend. Chocobos come from yeah, three, chocobos, do they chocobos, not? That's and chocobos they're chocobos weird looking. Three. I know. Don't you get chocobos. Um, Moogles. Behemoth. Might- First appearance yeah, the, of the behemoth. Yeah. The behemoth is two, I think. The behemoth is Final Fantasy two. Is it two? Yeah, you got you got yeah. Moogles in there. Moogles yeah, you got go up in three. Moogles. The Iron Giant, um, yeah. Ariman. Yeah. Uh, there's just a ton of of like, uh, is is the Adamant Toys two or three? Two. Adamant Toys is two. Yeah. Okay. Adamantoise but like, two. there is a ton of very memorable like sub bosses and recurring enemies. Bombs, I want to say, come from three, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bombs, bombs are another three. good one. Yeah. Yeah. What and is, again, what like is the, most of the, the classic... flying eyeball? That's the Arimon. Arimon. Yeah. Arimon. That's Arimon. Yeah. 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 And then, like I said, uh, you know, like you said, John, all these different summons, you know, Ifrit and Shiva, and, and they she come Rama from. And yeah, Leviathan three. are all. Um, well, or, you know. or was Leviathan four? Well, I think Leviathan might have popped up before, but the basics, the basics, like. Uh, your yeah, classic Ifrit, Shiva, Rama, th- those were all. Those Final are the, Fantasy that's III. the holy trinity of Final Fantasy summons. Were yeah. The yeah. ones, the Shiva, Ifrit, and Ramu. To those the point are... where any game where you replace one of those three with a different electric or ice or fire summon, like w- people question what the fuck you're doing. Which so. that was Final Fantasy twelve that did that. Well, twelve replaced everything. Twelve had and, none of and... the classics because um, they were all zodiac based. They were all something. zodiac monsters. Yeah. Lukavi. Yeah. Um, so you I know, will say, just really quickly, rather than playing the DS version, this is a game that has n- no distribution on Famicom outside of Japan in any way, shape, or form. If you speak and read Japanese and happen to live in Japan and own a Wii U, feel <laughs> free to go download this game legally. Everyone else around the world, go find a ROM of the Famicom version. There is a wonderful fan translation that is 20 years old and edited to hell and back now. And you can find a hack of this game that slows down the encounter rate and jacks up the experience. That might Do actually that be way. interesting. Uh, if somebody's played through the DS version a couple times, it might be interesting to, to kind of go back to that. I so. recommend the tour. I call it tourist mode. <laughs> when you go and play a Final Fantasy from the beginning, but cheating. Yeah. And Tourist Mode with 3 is worth it because this is, I would say, probably like top five NES soundtracks. Oh this my is God, it's so good. So good. Uematsu just mastered the machine by that point. And it's, that, it's worth playing for the music and the look alone. The standard battle theme from Final Fantasy 3 is just, I mean, uh, one of the best it. NES pieces of music of of all time one of the best pieces of gaming music i mean this is it's just oh oh my god yeah the, the one thing i want kiss to, is it the one thing i want to close out on three i don't know how if we're wrapping up but yeah, should be wrapping oh, up. yeah. Because the ds remake i thought was such a great way to update these old games and then four got one and my heart was so excited about the potential of a six in that style no, I don't. I do not want six. No, Never happened. Okay. You don't no. want the no, Bravely no, Default no team to give a Bravely style no. update to to five and six. Nope. I don't. I, I don't need care. to see no feet set, sir. No. That's not let's, a thing. Yeah, you know. Let's Thank save that for five and six. Let's save that yeah. for five. Let's save that for five and six. But I think. I think. I think. In closing, I think we can all agree. Final Fantasy three introduced a lot of the series staples that we have all come to love and know. I would. I would still place it near the lower rung of Final Fantasy games if we're talking. If we're talking preference or, or rankings, I think it's still bottom tier. It's like a bottom quarter. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere I'd in there. I'd still place it above 10. <laughs> Ooh, that's zesty. Take that's that. Zesty. You know what? <laughs> I don't entirely disagree with him, but we'll get to that at, at we'll another point. That, you know what? That is zesty. You know what? You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. 
I, uh, I I will agree with John is that the the NES Famicom games uh, they they deserve to be respected for what they laid the groundwork for and three was easily the the shining example of those especially when you include the remake but when you compare them to what followed they they do belong in the in the bottom echelon of the franchise is is where I would put it but three is the highest of them yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. that's fair. Well, if nobody else has anything to say about Final Fantasy 3, um, join us next week when we discuss Final Fantasy 4 with Anthony. Anthony's going to be back for 4 and 5, maybe Stick 6. Around. And none of Who us knows? are going to change clothes somehow. None of us are going to change clothes. Nope. Not sure what? how that it's, happened. It, you Spoiler know why? Alert. It's called- Spoiler alert. We're going to record the next episode right now. It's called- I'm like, I, no, I, I live like a cartoon character. I just have the one <laughs> <Yes>. outfit. <laughs> Uh, all right guys i'm actually gonna go change my shirt just to mess with you guys now i'll do it <laughs> all right thanks for th- thanks for tuning in guys we'll see you next week